Hi, and welcome to First Days with Johanna. Uh, this is a new setup since, well, the yarn is a little bit too cold at the moment, I will say. We have had a real cold snap here with minus 10 degrees, and I can't really heat out there to be comfortable filming. So at the moment we are in my office. I've cleaned it up a bit since we were last here. But yeah, this is it. Here is where I sit most of my days, I would say, if, if I get to work. <laughs> that is also a thing. Well, this is not mainly about my work. This is mainly about knitting. And that is something that incorporates my work for sure, since I'm a knitwear designer and a yarn dyer. And yeah, I like doing things with yarn. I have been knitting quite a lot since last time we spoke. So I have a big pile of things right next to me here that we will go through each and every one of them. And I'm getting ready for some holidays. This episode will drop on the first day before Christmas. And yeah, we are definitely getting Christmassy feels here. We had have had a cold snap, as I said, so we have actually some snow on the ground. It's supposed to be above zero for Christmas Eve, so I'm hoping that they are incorrect so we can keep the snow over Christmas. It's not that much so we can go out and do anything but it's still white and light and we've had had we have had magical mornings with rime frost on the trees. So I've taken amazing walks. Today it's a little bit more gray and windy so it's cold. I'm sitting here with my nice cup of tea. This mug is from a Swedish uh, ceramicer called Luna and yeah it's so amazing. I really really like this big handle. It's not chunky as you can see but it's really wide so it's easy to grab onto and I really really enjoy these mugs. We have two of them. We have one white and one of these light green. And for some reason, I ended up with the green and my husband got the white. And we are really happy with both, with them, both of us. So I will link Lena's Instagram down below with all the other descriptions that you can find down there. Yeah. Let's get into some missing shall we? I have finished a scarf, a sweater, I think four hats, a pair of socks. I think that is it since we last spoke. I don't have all the hats. I only have one at the moment actually. Uh, three of them are Christmas gifts, Two have already been sent out. One is still hanging around here. And one is actually on my daughter's head while she's at preschool. So I will try to insert pictures of the three of the hats that I don't have. They are made up of basically the same pattern, all four of them. Because, oh, I finished, I finished five hats. <laughs> but you will see four of them on pictures. <laughs> so we have this first gray hat. This is my pattern that I actually forgot what it's called. It's called Djupsvatten, I think, deep water. It's only available in Swedish at the moment. It's a really great starter hat because you actually knit the, the garter stitch in the beginning, you knit that front and back. So you have this little bit of a gap in the neck, look here. And that means that it sits really tightly across. So even if you have like a ponytail or something, you can still get this one really snugly down and to cover your ears when you're out and about. And then the rest of the hat is made up by knits and pearls going around, of course, so you don't have to seam it. You knit it around 
knits and pearls and one type of decreases. So this is a great starter knit. For someone that is learning to knit, you start off while doing only knit stitches for like five centimeters, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then you join in the round. And then that is a step up, knitting in the round, and you incorporate some purl stitches. So you have some knits and some purls for the pattern. Of course, you can skip the pattern. You can do only knit stitches, but here's a little bit of patterning on the hat, and that is made up by pearl stitches. And then when you do one type of decreases on the top and you're done. I really like having hats as a starter project because that means that I don't have to make two. A lot of people recommend knitting socks or mittens or something like that, or even scarves. Scarves is a different issue, but with socks or mittens, you have to make two. And sometimes you change gauge quite frequently when you're starting to knit. That means that a hat, when you do it, you do the complete, complete the whole thing and you get to learn like three small steps or four steps in this case, since you're learning to knit in the round two. And that means that you take it nice and slow, but you still see progress made throughout the project. Now, with scarf, that means you're gonna keep on going forever. I mean, I don't like knitting scarves. It's taking forever to finish them. So that's why I recommend a hat because they're quite easy and it's, yeah, it gets done quite fast. The other four hats are basically the same pattern. The last one that I have with my hair have a little bit of different decreases on it because that was a request. But the other three ones, they look like this. So they have this little bit of shape on top of the head. It's not flat against the head. It's got some extra air built in on top of the head. I knitted a white, a white and pink for my daughter and a green one. So the white and the green one are sent off as Christmas gifts and the white and the pink one is on my daughter's head while she's at preschool. And the white and pink one, I combined a uh, mohair silk together with 100% uh, merino wool yarn. Uh, the mohair silk is a lace weight as most mohair silks and the merino yarn is uh, what you call a foreplay or a fingering weight. Uh, it's not a sock yarn, but you can basically use a sock yarn with approximately 400 meters per 100 gram in. That is a great way to use up sock yarn in. This hat is cast on using the Italian method. So it creates a nice edge for your ribbing because the whole hat is made up by ribbing. I haven't fastened the ends because I just bound this up. And we will see if we can get some light on this one. As you can see here, it's just flowing into the knitting. And that means that we have a really stretchy edge that works perfectly with this ribbing that is the hat. This hat has a different top. It's too white, let's see. I have a different shaping on this one and it's just because the recipient of this Christmas gift doesn't like when there's extra fabric on top of her head. So that's why this one is knitted like this. Otherwise, it's the same pattern. I have the same number of costumes. I knitted about the same length. But this one, as same as my green, my green hat, it's made out of uh, worse, no, a DK, a DK weight yarn. This one is made out of my Highland wool. And that is 225 or 220 meters per 100 gram. Full high, Peruvian Highland wool. And it's warm and cozy. And I use the same needle sizes. I use the same cost on number. I follow the pattern as is. 
even if I have a little bit thicker yarn than I have with the lace plus fingering weight. This one is also really warm and cozy and it fits great on, on the heads. I don't want to try this on since it's a gift. And <laughs> I'm not done with hats apparently. I want to knit at least two more. I have one sitting in this cute little bag here. I haven't cast it on since I just finished this, finished this one just before recording. Uh, but I have some mohair. And I have this beige uh, sand colored that will be combined into a hat that hopefully will be ready before Christmas. That is my main project, I think. So as soon as that one gets cleared off the needles, then I'm ready to set out for all of my other knitting projects because let's put them over there. Like three weeks ago, I said, oh, it would be so nice to finish off all of my knittings to start the well, actually, I fought Christmas Eve with fresh cast on. Nothing on my needles. That is not going to happen. But maybe Christmas Eve. Let's see. I can't make any promises. Um, life is life. We still have a daughter at preschool who catches all the viruses, all the bugs that she can find. So we have spent so many, so many days taking care of sick children, or a sick child. She's the only one, or she's the only one catching them. Uh, I just had a big bird land outside my window there. So sorry, I got distracted. It's just like a dog seeing a squirrel. I <laughs> Well, instead of knitting, I've been taking care of sick child, sick child. <laughs> But today is actually the first day that she's back for an entire week. So I'm just cross crossing my fingers that she will last these three more work days that I have this year. So I can actually get some things done. And first one off is to finish writing the hat pattern. And I made the last week. So hopefully I will be able to send that out to you or out in the world not out to you directly but out in the world really really soon and you can go join in on instagram if you want to see more about this hat pattern when it drops now i don't know where to start really i think we start with the scarf that i made this is a made up scarf by me as well. Uh, this is supposedly to come become a pattern. Uh, for this scarf, I used Luna by Permin and it's a sport weight yarn approximately. And I have paired it together with the silk mohair. So the light gray that you can see is the silk mohair and the dark blue is the Luna. So I knit cast on stitches, knit a couple of, well, a bit of ribbing, one by one ribbing. And then I changed to a one color brioche. So this entire length is brush stitch going through and then I ended up with some ribbing again and as I said the scarf is well it, as this is a simple project but you get bored especially if you are like me who get bored with knitting if it's not something that keeps your interest that's why I like knitting socks I think because it keeps me interested as soon as I get bored, I need to do something else, like put in the heel or do the ribbing or shape the toe or whatever. But here is my finished scarf. Uh, this one 
well, my son said that he would like it, but I haven't worn it yet because I haven't officially given it to him. So let's see where it ends up. And yeah, this will be a pattern too, as soon as I get around to writing it down. We have one more thing that I've shown you before, but this one is now ready for test knitting. So if you go down below, you will see a link to a Google form where you can sign up that you are interested in test knitting this. This shawl that is named Brighter Days because we have the winter solstice coming up and then we will be heading on to brighter days, right? We could really, really use some brighter days at the moment, both in the world and with us being in the north with the winter. I could really use some more sunshine in the evening. <laughs> and yeah, there isn't enough sunshine to get everything done that I really want to do when it's light out. So this is a knit, a triangular scarf or shawl that is basically, you can make it as big as you would like. So I don't have any, I will have a few yarn suggestions and needle suggestions to that yarn, but it's really hard for me to say how much you will need because you can make it as big or as small as you would like. I will have a minimum measurement so that it will actually fit around and can be worn because you don't want to make a scarf for a doll most of the time. You want to make something that you can wear. And this one hasn't been blocked yet because that has been put on the back burner. Um, but yeah. Mostly made up out of this, this lace motif. And then we have a spine going down and the edge is a real simple edge. This one is knit out of, uh, let's see, sport weight merino. So it's nice and warm and soft. And yeah, but you can knit it out of a lace weight. You can knit it out of fingering weight. You can even go up to a worsted weight I'm not personally that fond of a bulky weight scarf, uh, but I mean, there is nothing stopping you. <laughs> it will be maybe more of a blanket than a scarf, but you can do whatever you like. So if you're interested in test knitting this, it will start, the test knitting will start between Christmas and New Year's. I haven't set an exact date when the pattern will be coming out and it will run until end of January. So you will have more than a month. And what I'm really interested in here is to see how much yarn you use and the measurements you get out of the scarf. So I really would like you to finish the test knit in order to get that back to me. So sign up below to be able to test knit this new Brighter Days shawl pattern. Now we have a big thing that I've finished that had been on my needles for 10 months. And that is my sweater. Wow, I have finished my sweater. It's so nice. I've worn it on a couple of occasions. It's so warm and yummy to wear and this is also combined with silk mohair. I've been not struggling. I've been on the fence of wearing silk mohair because it it's just a lot in my nose when I knit with it. But this one is so super soft to wear and I haven't had any problems with it. So this sweater in it is knitted out of a silk mohair combined with my uh, merino yarn, uh, fingering weight yarn, that is called number three. So here we have skew fluff, which is the silk mohair, and skew number three, which is the merino yarn. And here's the full sweater with a split hem. 
and there are so many gorgeous gorgeous details in the sweater like how the shoulders it's not a seam but this ridge here continues down to flow seamlessly into the sleeve and the split hem and how you do a lateral braid just before you go into the ribbing and I really, really like the fold of color because it makes it thick and nice and warm, even if it's, yeah, it's not snug. This sweater is called Comfort Zone Sweater by Missing Adventures. I would link, I will link it below. I really, really recommend this knitting. Uh, as you can see, it's patterned all over. It's made up by knits and pearls and slip stitches, it's not that hard, but it keeps you interested while knitting. So you go, oh, just this switch. Oh, just this bit. And then keep on going. So this was definitely my type of sweater. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I just don't know how it could take me 10 months to finish it. But it's here now and I'm really happy with it. And the pattern is super clear and gives you instructions to follow it along really, really nicely. So this is a big thumbs up for me and I will insert some pictures of me wearing it here so you can see how it actually looks on me and not just holding it up. That was the biggest thing I finished. I finished one more thing. I finished these pair of socks, which is this part here was knit on my circular sock machine. So I just put in ribbing heels and toes and yeah, I haven't worn them yet because I wanted to show that you them first. Try to do a little bit of a different heel because I'm struggling with these, this with hair being too narrow on my foot. And yeah, trying out something different here to see if that works so that I actually can enjoy my sock knitting machine the way I want to. Of course, I have to. And They will be photographed before I can start wearing them. But I actually think that they are a little bit Christmassy with the colors going on here. Uh, this yarn is a uh, Regia, Arna and Carlos yarn. I don't have the exact colorway, but <laughs> I think you can figure it out. They have really fun yarns with this self-patterning happening along them. I've knit this sock on my circular sock machine with 72 stitch stitches on the round and I hand knitted the cuff heels and toes. Uh, I share that entire process of how I turn a sock tube into a pair of socks in another episode and hopefully I can link that one up here. Uh, it's it's a little bit of daring to snip your knitting, I would say. But when, once you are okay with that, it's just like putting in a thumb in a mitten. If you, yeah, you can do the same method there as you do with this hair. And yeah, a pair of socks, all done. Okay, so how is my own challenge that I put on myself going? Well, at the moment, I have the hat on my needles that I, it's not really on my needles yet, but I need to get it on my needles, probably today. So apart from that, I have this sock that is about to get to the heel turn. This is a... Uh, Oh my God, I'm blanking on the name. I think it's a Highland Handmade. Can it be that? I will check it out and I will put the name down here. 
so you can like find out which one it is. But I brought it of um a friend who had it in her stash, so it's vintage stash for sure. And yeah, I really enjoy the colors, but it's more fall like. So you can see how long time this has been on my needle while just looking at colors. Because it was not snow outside when I started this one. I really, really, really enjoy the colors. So it's nothing wrong with them. I really enjoy wearing orangey colors or this little bit burnt green olive and yeah they will fit perfectly into my wardrobe but we are soon approaching the heel turn i'm knitting in them toe up flingle heel uh, 72 stitches and needle size is 2.25 millimeters and that will make up a us one these are my personal favorite needles it's the shogu red lace and yeah i have half a sock i still need to make the other half plus one more and plus the hat and then i still have that sweater you remember me talking about the sweater in the episode where i discussed all of my projects that i had on my needles well that sweater is still sitting there or the cardigan actually and i had in my mind that i could finish it and gift it to my ex mother-in-law for christmas but i don't know i don't know if i'm feeling motivated for it but I will dig it out today and see if I can figure out what I need to do and see if I can finish that before I need to send it off. And if it seems too impossible, then that will happen later on. It's just some kind of deadline that I put on myself and I'm really trying to not keep myself from setting deadlines because that is one big motivator for myself but I'm trying to set reasonably reasonable deadlines and reasonable goals for myself because I can keep on pushing myself all the time that makes me really exhausted so I need to find a good balance between this motivating part and this actual life happening because in my mind I can see myself knitting all day for five days that will be no problem I can really really get the knitting done if I can do that but I can't because I have other things going on in my life sometimes I end up knitting for just half an hour maybe an hour a day and that means that I barely will get the hat done by Christmas Eve so all things takes time and that is okay at this point of time in my life this is what it is and I need to be okay with that and I need to know that whatever I do that is enough and that goes for you too whatever you do that is enough you are enough you can always feel like you want to do more and you want to push yourself a little bit further and do a little bit more but you need to take care about yourself too. So that was all of the knitting that I have done lately. And as I said, it's been snowing outside. So it hasn't really been that much gardening. It's been a lot of putting in firewood instead. <laughs> so we can heat the house. We have two wood burning, um, what do you call them? Wood burning stoves. They aren't really stoves. We only heat ourselves with them. And yeah, they have been going on. They have been, yeah, they have been going most of the day, the last few weeks. So we keep them to uh, bring warmth. And that is, yeah, I really like that with the winter when we get to start the the can the stoves because it's a 
different kind of warmth than you get from anything else. So I think that is mostly what I wanted to talk about. I will see you in the new year. Have a great holiday period and happy new year and we'll see you then. Happy knitting. Bye. We have together put all our potatoes into storage. And then I got some help. Oh, well, I'm not sure it was helpful, but help with planting garlic. Um, she was maybe not helpful in this case. But all the garlic got planted and then I had a Christmas show and we had some real snow. So we were able to go sledding for one afternoon. We have baked some gingerbread that, well, it's all eaten now, so we need to make more. Then we were out in a snowstorm. Uh, me, Tilda and our, or her grandmother. And this was during the cold snap that we had a few, I will say weeks ago, but it wasn't a week ago. This was minus 13 degrees, the ice, and it was all quiet and still. What you saw there was the moon. And then behind my back, the sun was rising and the morning was just magical. I will, I mean, yeah, I find this kind of mornings really, really magical. Merry Christmas, everyone.